going too fast. It might be 701, um, but I'd like to bring the Board of Health meeting to order. Thank you so very much, Aaron, for starting the video for us. Um, it's time being 7 o'clock, date being March 18th. I'd like to call the Board of Health meeting to order members present. Um, Alex Haggerty is excused. He's attending the vape meeting um, that's happening at the high school. Chris Schultz, Terry Mays, Linda Dickey, myself, Susan Emery, and the health agent is also excused. As always, we'd like to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Next up, there are the e-sick people. And so um, we'll probably have a discussion. Um, I see we have two chairs here. As you approach, because this is being recorded, we'd like you to state your name and, um, and your affiliation to the town of Abington. And that's for the benefit of the tape. And as a backup method, we have... Um, this recorder go into and the recorder doesn't have benefit of pictures. So um, I guess uh, we'll let you guys start. Um, who would like to come up? I understand you guys had a violation. Mm -hmm. uh, Excellent. So please have sure. two people sitting if you don't mind by beginning with your names and um, how you're associated to Abington. Sure. Um, my name is Lauren Weigold. I am the operations manager of ASIC Barn. Um, and we do have an Abington location uh, right down the street. Uh, my name is Matthew White. Uh, I am a manager slash employee at ESIC Barn. I do a lot of things, but uh, I am mainly consultant for a lot of the public uh, YouTube side of things, speaking and such. Excellent, excellent. So um, why don't you tell us the, the facts as you see them? Okay. So uh, I just wanted to, and I'm short one, so please don't dock me any points, but uh, I've got <laughs> okay. some copies of my speech. Um, so I just wrote up a quick little thing right. for you guys. All right, thanks. Um, so first of all, members of the board, do any of you guys vape? No. Okay. I don't. I, I do not do. vape. Gotcha. Welcome. Come on in, there's seats. So um, my question to you guys is, if you guys don't vape, how would you guys know what you're regulating, essentially? Actually, um, I did try vaping once when I was as an aide to quit smoking. Okay. And how was? But your I do have a son that vapes mm -hmm. since for probably six years now. Very long. How was your experience with <laughs> Too long. Um, I personally, like, I make him either stay in his room or go outside because mm -hmm. the vape he uses it throws off a lot mm -hmm. of, um, not even smoke, vapor, but mm -hmm. it, it smells, not that it smells bad, right. mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, I can't see the person in front of me. Okay. Um, I did use it to quit smoking, and it did help me, mm -hmm. but I went back to smoking, so mm -hmm. I don't use it now. So I, I do know a little bit about it besides okay. all of the educating that we did when we did the regulations. We actually didn't just write them in two meetings. It took about two years of, mm -hmm. of educating ourselves and having um, DJ Wilson from the tobacco, mm -hmm. the state's tobacco and ESA regulations mm -hmm. come in. Okay. So. Okay. So, since August 8th, 2012, we here at ESIG Barn have been continuously assaulted with rules, regulations, and orders from the Food and Drug Administration and the federal government. This industry does not need any further regulation, as especially not us. We have been one of the only specialty vape shops in the area that has followed all regulations, despite how has it affected us and our business since day one. And we are still one of the only vape shops who follows these rules. There are vape shops in every town that our stores are in who repeatedly do not follow the rules, whether it's not IDing customers, selling things illegally from under the counter, or just a complete disregard for the regulations in general. I can name at least four vape shops in the surrounding 15 miles of this exact location that do not practice proper ordinance. But you wouldn't want to do that. No. No. Because <laughs> so, that's not why we started the business. Right. Yeah. right. Exactly. Um, we comply with the placement display regulations, as our cases can only be accessed by our employees. We comply with face-to-face -face sales, as only customers in our store who have been ID'd can purchase all of our products. Our packaging is all child resistant, and I have even brought a sample for you guys to try out so that you guys can see that our stuff is child resistant. Um, and we are incredulously strict on all of our carding procedures. Uh, so a couple of quick facts about vaping. Nicotine is not inherently harmful to you. To any adult with a fully developed brain, and by fully developed I mean, you know, your brain is done growing, it is not 
super incredibly harmful. It can be hurtful to your body when you take in large quantities, but if you use it sparingly, just the same way as a cup of coffee, it becomes the exact same thing because nicotine is exactly the same as caffeine in that it is a stimulant. Um, if all of you guys have your morning coffee every day, you guys are addicted to caffeine just like you know people who smoke and people who vape are addicted to nicotine. They're in the same category, they're the same kind of a thing, they do the exact same thing to your blood pressure, everything else, same exact health stuff. So nicotine is incredibly addictive, but it is found in everyday foods such as eggplants and tomatoes. Nicotine also is only for adults who know the risk. Every single regulation that is on, whether it's e-cigarettes or regular cigarettes or blunt wraps or anything else, it is all completely regulated and we follow all of those regulations. So from us at least, there is no underage. We are incredibly strict about that. Um, so attached, I have a couple of different studies about secondhand vapor. So secondhand vapor does not exist. There is no such thing as secondhand vapor. And uh, as you guys can see with these results in front of you, so nicotine not detected, glycidol not detected, formaldehyde is at 7.2 ppb. And that is important to note because you guys might see a big red flag, you know, formaldehyde. That's, you know, a very big thing, very big, uh, what's the word? Very big uh, controversy in the vaping industry. Formaldehyde at 7.2 ppb is the exact same as outside air. That's exactly like stepping outside. Um, and you know, all these, you know, not detected, not detected, not detected using standard method. Um, another big one to note is acetone, and another really big one, which is also very uh, controversial in the vaping, you know, argument of things, is also benzene and also diacetyl. Both of those were not detected. So. Just a very quick thing. So there is no secondhand vaping, there's no such thing. When you breathe in, you know, when you aerosolize your e-liquid and you breathe it in, all the nicotine gets taken in from touching your esophageal and lung tissues. So when you exhale, you do not exhale any nicotine, which means, you know, like no secondhand vapor. If I blow a cloud in your face, which I wouldn't do because I'm a very upstanding person, might I just say. But if <laughs> you seem very nice. Well, I thank you. Um, but you know, if I blew a cloud in your face, you wouldn't be addicted to nicotine. You wouldn't be taking in any. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So uh, this study adds to the evidence that under real life conditions, secondhand vaping does not appear to pose any significant health risks, concluded the public health expert, Dr. Michael Siegel. He added that whilst he himself has been behind many smoking bans that took place, based on this current evidence, he fails to see a reason as to why government should ban vaping in public spaces. Adding, with regards to vaping, I just don't see any reasonable evidence at this time as it poses time that it poses, excuse me, any significant health standard to bystanders. That's information from the governor? No, that is information from Dr. Michael Siegel, oh. a licensed medical practitioner in the state of California. But he's not in the Department of Public Health. Um, he's a licensed medical practitioner. Mm. So <laughs> three really quick things to note about the study. So first thing, the study was conducted by a licensed medical practitioner who backed multiple smoking bans all over California. Two, the study took place in easily one of the most he heavily regulated states for vaping in the country, California. And we could tell you guys horror stories of all the hoops that they have to jump through in California on labels and bottles, um, the kind of quality the bottles have to be produced in, how they have to be biodegradable. There's so many different things. Sure. So well, um, all industries get regulated. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> and we're welcome. To yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, and we, and we all we all have businesses here. We all get regulated. We all can sit here for hours telling about how right. uh, horror stories of how we're regulated and somebody else isn't. Right. Okay. Um, so the study found that in a small enclosed non-ventilated vape shop with 13 customers vaping not counting employees and at the time there was two to three employees vaping inside the store with 13 customers there was no carcinogens found in the air and the air quality met Californian health standards again the state with the strictest regulation for vaping and otherwise and California does have some incredibly strict health standards for their air their quality their purification and everything else. So, based on the evidence of the study and many others, there is no public health risks from vaping at all. And as Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 111, Section 31 states, boards of health may make reasonable health regulations. Based on the facts that you now know, there is nothing reasonable about banning something that doesn't hurt anybody. There is the real harmful part about vaping is when you are consuming nicotine under age. The effects of nicotine on a developing brain are indeed very harmful. 
But my rebuttal to that here is that at eSig Barn, we hold our employees to incredibly strict carding standards. We even hire members of the WeCard organization, as Lauren has already said, to come in and continuously and randomly, without our knowledge, we have no idea they're coming in, and they check us. If we fail a card check, we are immediately on ground zero, and especially depending on where we were with infractions before that, we could be fired for getting a red card. The second we get a red card, even me, I haven't had an infraction since I started basically, but if I got a red card, I would be on my last straw. And I'm okay with that because as eSig Barn, as a company, we are all about keeping things for adults. We are about our adults purchasing our flavors, about our adults trying our flavors in store at zero milligrams, and the last thing, absolute last thing we want to do as we continuously are regulated again and again by the Food and Drug Administration and the FDA, well, that is the same thing, excuse me. So as we are continuously regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, we don't want to give them any more ammunition. And on top of that, we here choose ENDS products as a healthier method of getting our nicotine. So we understand that as adults, this is you know, an outlet for us. This is our method. You know, we've tried the patches, we've tried the gums. This is what we like. And we want to keep that open for adults and everybody else everywhere. Excuse me. That's quite all so. right. A study published by the FDA at the height of the Juul epidemic, and this was about a month ago, revealed that over 70% of teens who illegally acquired tobacco products bought them from brick and mortar retail locations. The statistics on the study showed that retailers who had the most cases of being caught selling to teens were larger retailers such as Walgreens and Circle K. So really big name, pharmacy-esque, convenience store kind of a deal. We have placed a system of checks and balances in place to deal with underage vaping and the problems that it brings, such as our company policy that everybody in your party must be of age and have a valid ID or we cannot sell to them. And let's say, I just want to point this to you guys because this is a situation, I work in the Fall River store mainly, uh, and this is a situation I run with daily. So let's say all of you members of the board came in and you guys wanted to you know, come buy a vaporizer. So let's say, Susan, you have your ID, Linda, you have your ID, Teresa, you have your ID, and Chris, you don't have yours. I have to turn all of you away. Even though you guys are all old enough, and I can see that you're old enough to be in there, everybody in your party must be of legal age and present their identification. Absolutely everybody. I'm going to keep my smart alecky comments to myself. Then. <laughs> Men and women of the Abington Board of Health, with all of the following knowledge, how can you guys ban vaping in our establishment? The studies done about secondhand vape exposure have all come back with solid results, so I dare you guys to dispute the facts from a medical practitioner who conducted a controlled test and came back with solid results. If that was 13 people vaping nicotine, imagine how much less harmful to others vaping zero milligrams are. Based on these grounds, from a public health standpoint, there is no basis for you guys to ban vaping in our shop, testing or otherwise. Keep in mind that all of our flavors testing is conducted in-store in an adult-only establishment tested by adults of legal age who have provided ver verification for it, excuse me, and already use the same kind of product. The store is properly ventilated, and aside from one woman's multiple complaints, there hasn't been another case of complaints about our Abington store. Employees, health, safety, or otherwise. We follow our regulations closely and even charge a fee for sampling our product as is required by FDA regulations of August 8th, 2012. Taking that into account, we're gonna skip that part. Please disregard that paragraph. You all instituted this regulation without notifying our business, the only business it affects at this moment in time until after it was said and done. You did not speak to us about the facts about vaping, and now that you all know exactly what vaping is about, I ask you to politely reconsider your ban. Our customers trying our zero milligram flavors before they buy is not a danger to the public nor anyone else. Even us and our customers who use ENDS products use these products as a safer alternative to smoking harmful tobacco cigarettes. We have done our research fully and well, and we politely ask you guys to see our side of things with an open mind as we're sure that after the information has been received and understood, you all would understand just how ridiculous this is and why we are as upset as we are. And I would just like to say, um, there is uh, some abrasive language in here. Please yeah. do not take <laughs> it as me being abrasive because very clearly, you know, I'm coming to you guys as, you know, politely and genuine. Um, and I would also like to point out that you know, we are upset not just at, you know, you guys' decision to further regulate, but because we are already 
ridiculously heavily, excuse me, I'm just going to take this off. We are already ridiculously regulated by the Food and Drug Administration and the federal government. Our store has changed so much over the course of, from the nine years ago when it opened that we can't, you know, we used to mix juice and house for people when we first opened before regulations and we can't do that anymore. We used to help people, you know, touch their devices and set them up. We can't do that anymore. Um, and, you know, we've complied with every single one, um, but to us this is just, this is a step too far. Um, we allow our customers to taste liquids in order to find out which ones they like. The concept of try before you buy needs no explanation. It helps consumers and business owners alike to make sure that customers are happy. We have rolled with the punches since day one of the FDA regulating the vape industry. We've kept our heads down and complied with all the rules and regulations that we've had to follow, but this one is ridiculous. There isn't a law against taste testing alcohols or trying perfumes before you buy, so why further regulate something that isn't affecting anyone? You can legally try out alcohols in liquor stores, then get back into your car with your family and drive inebriated, but you can't vape in a vape store. We also know that there was a woman working in the hair salon next door that complained about the vaping. This woman was a problem even to her own workplace. Her reactions were baseless and ridiculous. She even went as far as to report us to OSHA on more baseless accusations that were endangering her and the public by vaping without proper ventilation. Since our Abington store opened, we have always made sure to have an oscillating fans and air purification systems that have costed a pretty penny. That coupled with the facts that you now all know about secondhand vapor or lack thereof should show you that this new regulation is ridiculous. Well, we know what you told us. As stated by the Abington Board of Health's tobacco policies, any resident who desires to register a complaint pursuant to the regulation may do so by contacting the Abington Board of Health or its designated agents, and the board shall investigate. There is no regulation against vaping in an adults-only establishment. There is no harmful effects to breathing in secondhand vapor, as we have already discussed. By your own rules and regulations, you had no reason at all to enforce the indoor vaping ban in our establishment. Our employees can smell the hair salon's acetone and perm solution. Mind you, perm solution is a toxic compound. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, I politely ask you guys to reconsider this ban as the only thing it truly hurts is our local business, our customers, and all the American businesses' products that we carry. This ban is based on fear that was instilled in you by big tobacco propaganda and ignorance. Now knowing the facts, I implore you to read them and try to dispute them. We've done our research, and it's time for you board members to do the same. Thank you. When did you say those regulations, I'm sorry, that you, was it 2012? Yep. Because I haven't updated from the Attorney General from 2015. It's a summary of the amended cigarette, cigar, smokeless tobacco, and electronic smoking device regulations. Um, and it covers, if you want, uh, I wish I, mm. I tried to get this printed up, but it didn't. But what practices do these regulations prohibit? Sampling is one of them. I have that. So actually. therefore, it's, you cannot it's sample sampling indoors. For free. Sampling for free. free. No, it says sampling slash or free distribution, which I know I the reason it. you added a dollar for sampling is so that, and I, I said that, that, that this was going to be the show argument. You, um, I can assure you that <coughs> the industry as a whole, it's not just our company. We actually just came from a convention in Connecticut at Mohegan Sun where people that were attending the convention paid a fee and they were allowed to sample products because they paid a fee. How do you pay? How do you charge for your sampling? We, charge we have a juice sampling option in our program. Yep. So we can either rope it in with your purchase or we charge you beforehand. And we can show you receipts of this. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a VIP program. So your son may be a VIP member, I'm not quite sure. But it's $15 a month to be a part of this program. And that includes Which sampling. So every time they come in our store, <laughs> they have they are automatically paying it's sampling. Like um, and if I could also add, I mean, Matt definitely touched on a lot of topics, but I'm not a vapor. My father-in-law owns the business. He couldn't be here because he was uh, had a vacation scheduled for this meeting. We were trying to get on to the March 4th meeting, but uh, didn't make the cut, unfortunately. We don't make those rules either. I understand that. <laughs> um, but. As I said, I'm not a vapor. I, I saw firsthand when I first met my father-in-law, he um, had just put, had a section of his lung removed. He went back to cigarettes because he was that addicted. Uh, it wasn't until I think about six months later, some his doctor told him if he did not stop smoking, he was going to die. And a nurse suggested electronic cigarettes. They were new. Um, he tried them. It was the first thing that helped him quit smoking. He was giving these to his friends and family that were smokers, um, you know, and he had tried every single thing. He tried patch, Nicorette, um, you know, so prescription, everything. 
everything. So yeah. you know, I don't think that's really the argument, though. Like we're not, no, we're not. I, I'm no, not disagreeing that no, it's. it's I, I think I it's definitely point. better than yeah. smoking. Go and ahead. I'm please. sorry. Right. So, you know, so he, you know, he out of desperation tried electronic cigarettes. He started this business to help. You know, he was giving it out to his friends and family. He started this business to help people that he didn't know help quit smoking because he knew how much of a, you know, how dangerous it was. Um, so when our customers come into our store, they are desperate. I'm, I'm sure you know, like you said, you did, you were a smoker. They are desperate because they've tried everything. They've blindly thrown money at things that they can't test that haven't worked for them. So when they step in foot into our store, we have over 70 flavors. They don't know what's going to work for them. They don't know what they like. So if they just blindly walk into our store and say, okay, I like strawberries, that's great. But you might not like that. It may not help you quit smoking. And you know, they're willingly walking. I think we all understand the concept of sampling. I understand you know. that, but that's, that's, I mean, it affects our business. We have four stores and in all three other stores, customers are allowed to come in try one of the flavors at zero milligrams it has no nicotine they're willingly walking into an adult only establishment um you know we don't allow children in the store so even myself when i bring my two kids i wouldn't bring them in the store because we're not allowed to so they're willingly walking in and they're trying all these flavors that have zero milligrams of nicotine our employees are also vaping zero milligrams of nicotine but that's so they can make an educated decision for something that will help them quit smoking so yes, our products have nicotine, but they're meant to wean you off of it, and that's what we're trying to do. I mean, let's be frank, it's a business. Of course it's a business. <laughs> You're not really interested in so much business. being altruistic I, and to have them, you want them to continue to use of your course, product. Of course, but a lot of our customers are vaping zero milligrams because it's the... it's the These well, new regulations, it doesn't matter if it has nicotine in it or not. Yeah. As long as it gives off a combustible... And these are the state regulations. Uh, and I so as you, a town, I don't know what other three towns you're in, but as a town, we have to adopt I can you with the, the state, state regulations. I can assure you, all of our stores are following the state regulations. We're allowed to, for sampling, a zero milligram in our store. And that's well, every... I, I actually was going to call back from Laura Healy because I called her office today and nobody did call me back because when I found these um, updated, amended, did you read the 2015 read ones? Yes, but it did not include, it was anything that had nicotine in it. It's not... No, this one says whether it contains nicotine or not. It's... Yes. And CMI sampling 21. slash free distribution are two separate things. So you can't yeah, do free distribution or, like you say, liquor stores also let you test things, and they do. They have wine testing once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't go into a liquor store, never have drank a beer, and say, can I taste that beer and that beer? Can I taste all those beers to see which beer I like the best? I can't do that. Just like I'm a hairdresser. They can't come in, and I'm not going to like color their hair 10 different colors to figure out which color they really like. I understand that. You know what I mean? But if you go to any But these are the states. In, in the state, we're allowed to sample. It is breaking or otherwise opening any cigarette, smokeless tobacco product, or electric smoking device package to sell or distrib distribute any of it. So that would be taking something, breaking it up to sample. It's illegal. It's and, not and illegal. It's We've actually had we had a convention in Massachusetts where people came in and they sampled, and this was a year ago. It was within a year. We're allowed to sample zero milligrams of nicotine. We're not letting customers try anything other than that. It's flavors at this point. It's so not this, anything to do with nicotine or I tobacco. I think this is the same thing. And this added. says this that you cannot. Well, this is the amended one. And it says what products do these regulations cover? And vape products, even without nicotine, and are in there. Whether the liquid contains nicotine yeah, it, or not. Yeah, it just has to be combustible and, and throw a vapor well, off. Well, you can look further into that, but I can assure you that... Well, that's why I called I them today, but I haven't so gotten a call back. I was trying to... Back to I called you. twice. And I'm not saying that we're, you know, we're obviously we're in profit. You're all small business owners. We're, we're here to make money. So when something like this is thrown at us, it affects our business. And I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. But this is our this is our family. This is our small business. It's our family, and you must know that as business owners. So it's like if you come in and this is affecting our business and our livelihood and what my the owner is passionate about, and it's just it's not something that's reasonable. 
I mean, yeah, like, if you want to try a different type of beer, oh, maybe it has orange in it, maybe I'll like it. But it's not something that I'm trying to help me quit something that is killing me. You know? Well, I, I know I a personally. Lot of people go in there just, they're not trying to quit well, anything. Well, personally, my son is not trying to quit. <laughs> he loves yeah. to make. And He's I've not been trying to quit anything. I've been knocked over. Well, that's that, personal that is toxic. That's personal it's just, I can't preference. stay in there for two it's seconds. But it's his it's not offensive. Nothing. Well, it makes me dizzy. It must be in my head then. Well, listen, it's not it's, offensive to me at all. But these are people that are willingly walking into a store. It's not like we're in a mall and people are vaping. You're willingly walking into a vape shop. So it's you. The you only argument, like and I have willingly walk walked in. out. Yeah. The only <laughs> argument is it's a public place, and in the state of Massachusetts, you're not allowed to smoke anything. It's a public, but it's a public place. place. It's a private business, one, one and we pay a tobacco. But it's still a public place. Okay. It's open to the public. So what about cigar, you know what I mean? What about cigar bars? Yes, actually, yes. Um, would you like to please just announce so your name, just so that we have it for the record? My name I appreciate is Megan Simpson. Thanks. I also work for the Eastig Barn. Sure. Um, so all of you are here, and your purpose is public health and public safety and what's going on in your town. So what you're doing essentially is taking an activity out of a shop that you know what's going on in when you enter and putting it out in the public. Because now what you're doing is saying, you have to go outside to vape. So what it, what's that gonna do? It's gonna put a group of people on the sidewalk outside the store vaping. In people front of who vape and go to vape shops, vape. They're going to go outside. Well, they're going to blow giant clouds. I think it's kind of people who will don't. Well, you can smoke in public, choice. also. You can't smoke within 20 feet of a municipal Sorry, building or okay. some places. But well, I will tell you that if I'm walking by a business and somebody's standing outside the entrance and I have to walk through their their cigarette smoke cloud, it's not something I choose to do, and so I dislike it greatly. So people who are are in that plaza and going to other businesses. They don't necessarily need to have vape thrust upon them against their will. But if there were adults who chose as 21 plus or 18 plus, depending upon the I think the state says 21 now. It's 21 now. Or 18, a grand depending on grand the When you were born. Yeah. yeah. If those people decided, made the adult choice to walk into that store and have that be around them, they have that right. But what you're doing by saying that it can't happen in our store is forcing it upon people in public that wouldn't otherwise have it forced upon them. Well, and that's why I'm trying to defend us saying that we have to go by the state's state regulation. So if you can show me a regulation that's different I'll from this one send it to you. Okay. that I that I pulled up from to, and I'm still waiting to hear back from Moore Haley's office because I was doing my research today because I knew you guys were coming mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure because wording it's all in the wording. It is. As far as regulations go and I read this over and over and over because Everybody can construe and and can take things differently. So I did read it a few times just but to make sure to consider that we are that the wording. We are a business that, like Matt said, we we make sure we're cautious around every turn. You don't think that we would pay attention to something the state is but putting into is place? You, you clearly signed you know Wayne clearly signed the regulations on November twelfth, twenty eighteen saying, yes, I'm going to follow all these rules. And the very last one says, and the use of e-cigarettes at indoor establishments is prohibited. prohibited by local law. And he signed law. it. It's right here. I'm, this isn't new. That was over a year it's ago. Just, okay. But well, I, I would like to see like the regulations. Made up, so I well, no, it's we, we by, by the law, it's kind of like open meeting laws. We have to go by the, the state's rules. Like if the state changes well, the rules. I will send you with the information that we have. Please, because I would like to see it, because I want to compare it to these ones that I found. Because believe me, I was I hate computers and I hate being on the phone, but I was on it all day trying to research and pull up regulations. Trust me, there's so very, a lot of vague rules out That's there. what I mean. And, and it's all in the wording. Yeah. Mrs. Dickey, Excuse could, me? Yes. could I just they say something? Gray, they leave a lot of gray areas on purpose, so we can't fight. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, they did. You know, they didn't. Uh, so no. this, I just wanted to show, you know, for the record, uh, my paper's down. I'm not, you know, this is from, from me. Um, so just my experience. Uh, I smoked a pack and a half of American Spirit Dark Greens uh, every day for about a year. Uh, in that year, I am an asthmatic to start off with. I had bronchitis four times. Uh, I swapped over to e-cigarettes, haven't had bronchitis since. But my point about this is, um, as Lauren has stated earlier, this is our livelihood. 
Um, I've worked at eSig Barn for almost close to a year now. It's been about 10 months. Uh, everybody behind me right now is my family. Everybody has been so much more than kind to me, and we all have incredibly similar experiences with, you know, whether it's chew, dip tobacco, um, cigarellos, uh, black and milds, you know, standard cigarettes, double diamonds, black and milds, you know. We have all, we've all been there, and we've we found the method that works. Um, as you guys said before, something that you hit on, uh, Ms. Emery, was, uh, you know, you were pointed out, you know, like, oh, well, you know, you want recurring customers, and you're only in it for the money. Um, that is 100% not true. Yes, we are a business, and we need money to sustain ourselves. That is the premise of business, of course, as, you know, there's no disputing that, absolutely at all. But our goal is to 110% get our customers off of nicotine altogether. And that is what our goal is 120% of the time. When a customer comes in, my first question to them is, okay, you know, they'll usually, you know, interject with something like, oh, you know, I've been smoking for about blah, 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 and I smoke such and such amount of, you know, cigarettes a day, and I'm, I'm looking to quit. And I'll say, okay, you know, what are you looking to get into? And, you know, whether they want something that is, you know, this tiny and puts out a cloud that you can't even see, or they want something that is, you know, very standard, huge devices that put out plumes and plumes of smoke that looks like you're looking up at the sky, you know. Um, we want them to quit. We never want somebody to be addicted to nicotine for the rest of their life. But here's the thing is, that is an adult decision that they have to make for themselves. So a perfect example, Ms. Dickey, is your son. Um, you know, he is a daily habitual nicotine user, as are, you know, all of us behind us. That's... That's what Why some of us has nicotine in it. I thought that was. He told me there was no nicotine in that. One. He might have. He might have he zero milligram e liquid. He uses level three nicotine, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but can I ask you now? All this research that you have done, I've heard something about um, the vapes. Even the nicotine free causes popcorn lung. Can you okay, that, that is. Can, can you give me any info on that? that? Go for it, okay. Megan. So there is a chemical, and it's called diacetyl, and it is used to produce an artificial butter flavor. And it is found in microwave popcorn. That's why it's called popcorn lung. It is primarily used to provide the artificial butter flavor in microwave popcorn. Um, there have been three cases of popcorn lung in history? Seven. Okay. That's Seven. One. Okay. Very few. They've come from people that have lifelong worked in these microwave popcorn. Companies. Industries. Uh, factories. But vaping's but pretty new, too. So seven... People dying isn't. Okay, so no, listen, how many? No, no. So, it, it's, please go ahead. So, so, there is, I'm trying to remember my numbers. How, how many hundred times, really? hundred times more diacetyl in an analog There's, cigarette? Then there have been chemical breakdown studies done of e liquid that contains some diacetyl. The ones that were found to have the absolute most diacetyl didn't even have a small... Nine micrograms. Thank you. Nine micrograms in an entire 60 milliliter bottle compared to 900 micrograms in any one cigarette. So we'll never tell you that cigarettes are good, but the hundreds of times more diacetyl occur in a cigarette, there's still never been one case of popcorn lung from an actual cigarette. So popcorn lung is a thing, it has been linked to e-cigarettes as a scare tactic. It is, there's no factual basis behind people getting popcorn lung from vaping. If that was the case, you'd get you. it from smoking cigarettes, and you don't. I was curious if you knew anything yeah, about it. Yeah, you're done with your point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something? I was going to go over what she was going over, but I do want to go over one other thing. My name is Ralph Menchie. I am the manager of the Abington e-cig bar. So the woman who had emailed you guys in particular about the vapor, she actually no longer works for it has, Cups. This has nothing to do with that. Yeah, this I don't even know what you're talking about. about. This, has, this has stuff to do with vaping indoors in, in, our, in our store. Mm. So she no longer works for Supercuts, and we actually are very friendly with the girls who work at Supercuts we right now. I do. Today. Yes, you did. So she, I had spoken with her and I had asked her, I was like, do we bother you guys anymore? Have we bothered you in the past, I don't know, two and a half, three years since that complaint was put in? She and the other girls who work there, they, they are not bothered by it because the clouds inside of the store back when we were vaping, back in that day, were very substantial because vaping was at its prime. There was a lot of people coming in and out of the store using big cloud devices to produce big clouds. So it would make its way through the ceiling over into supercuts. That is what would happen. 
Until so with that being said, after the first initial complaint, we actually had a $4,000 ionizing air filter installed in the store for when it did get too vapey in there. As well as we have three circulating fans and we keep our, we keep our air conditioning and heating system on, on all the time, so there's constant wind flow. We haven't had any issues with them since. And in fact, some of the girls that work there actually come into our store and purchase products now because they are trying to get themselves off of cigarettes. They're trying to get away from cigarettes. And the manager um, had reached out to Marty today, who I guess couldn't be here, but she reached out to confirm all of this as well. Yeah, yes, and I was looking at, because uh, Marty, yeah, will, we, yeah, yeah, we were here during all that. We were, and we Marty were here during, yeah, that's speaking. why I keep looking over to, to them, because I, we were here during all of that, so we have gone through all that. I think of that we're kind of at a standstill, though, on this right now, because I, it really has nothing to do with any of the other businesses and what how they feel. It has to do with the state regulations, and by law, we have to follow those. Well, reach out so to if you can, yes, please find me. I do think this. that it might conflict with our workplace smoking or non-smoking. It does. Well, as well, and because he signed Which this, if maybe you do you have a copy of this that you can show I've him. I've been sent it. Yes. Okay, yeah. just so because I it does. Say, I give you mine because I don't need one. But that was written based on the fact that Supercuts had. No, 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 this was when we. All. It wasn't because of no, this. Is 2018. Minutes. There's meeting minutes that Marty had sent me that was saying that because we, there was a complaint. That was in 2015. It had nothing to do yeah, with the regulations. Yeah, different. that was before this, that. I, I'll be happy to give this to you, my dear. Oh, I have a copy. So yeah, and it does say. Um, well, and for the record, um, for the people that can't see it, um, the date on this is 11 12 18. Um, so that, because um, this is also a matter of public record too. Yeah, that was point. actually. So I have to speak for everyone. May I uh, ask yes. a very quick question? Absolutely, um, so young man. Those regulations that you guys are following from Massachusetts State, what year did those regulations come in? You said 15, right? The, no, no. The um, original complaint came in in 2000. No, not, no, the, not the complaint. complaint. The, well, uh, the this regulation. Is, this is the year. updated summary that uh, they amended in 2015. Okay. So, so that was four years ago. I was trying to find something okay. more updated. If you, um, if you have, have something you. more updated, so I would appreciate to see it. Just a very quick question. So if that was amended in 2015, right, um, Marty had been in how many times since, since then? I have seen Marty a total of three times. Well, he's myself. only been on a year. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Not even. So and the previous board and the previous of board of Sharon. director, um, they all said that vaping in our establishment was okay in these years after this. And I know so this oh, no. oh, I know that Sharon. Oh, <laughs> oh no, you're losing no. us there. I've been on the board all <laughs> Sharon didn't say I was that. Here for never. All these discussions. That was never. Sharon would never. No. No. We actually have a moratorium no. on on hookah bars because of the indoor smoking regulations. We decided like there's a moratorium on those right now too yeah because of the indoor the workplace smoking because we have yeah that we the also state have amended smoking see the state amended them in 2015 and i'm assuming that that was when we we re updated our work and regs. Well, call me ridiculous. Workplace. I don't think you'd want to work right. for a vape shop if you didn't plan on vaping. But right. Yeah. I well, mean, I know there are vaping bars, mm -hmm. also, and but you're a retail establishment. You're not an actual vaping bar. There are vaping bars where you actually just go those in are and retail vape, right? establishments as well. But they're also vaping bars, like a so, like a bar where you go drink, right? Okay, but like we have we have a station is is a vape bar. Right. We have bars in all of our locations. For we even have couches stuff. and tables. So then, how are we? Not not a vape bar. Well, um, I well, I know in our town you're listed as okay. an so so in theory, right? So in theory, if we got a vape bar license, we could vape in our store. But that's what I'm saying because we don't. Where we have a moratorium on the hookah bars, I doubt that we would have a smoke bar because of the workplace smoking regulations. Right. So adults can go into bars and drink, but they can't go into bars and smoke. They have to go outside and smoke. So it applies to any... Even though it's not the same thing. Even yeah. close. Because the state has now made... Has because the now state defined, amended it in 15. But if you can find something that's I will. after 15... I certainly will. Because I couldn't find anything. I so tried we all to day. So able to find that and produce it with that? Would well, we it, if again? the state does not... If the state is not going by that regulation, if they've changed it, then I suppose we could talk about it again. And yeah, one, one I mean, thing I don't I'd see like to, to why. Mention, um, I'm one of the newer members of the board. And in the short period of time I've been on this board, I, I've listened to, especially on social media, um, 
people do a lot of complaining about the board. The fact that you guys care enough to come in as a group with all this material, um, I sincerely appreciate. This um, is how we feel. You know, this, this, yeah, this, this, yeah. this is our life. This, this is what it, you know. Our, we could all work retail anywhere. We choose yeah. this because we care, and this is something that we all feel very, very strongly about. And I think this is right. Oh, one thing that I would say about this board, at least in the time that I've been here, any regulations that we have passed, we have not added anything onto state regs. We've just gone with whatever the state is saying, okay. changed the language to fit the particulars of our town. But we, although we have the authority to additionally regulate, mm -hmm. this board has not, to the best of my knowledge. Awesome. So, you know, if the state's wrong here or we're misinterpreting it, I think that's definitely worth okay. a further conversation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very and that is why but, but I was I want on you the guys phone to know today. I'm still me, waiting I for a call. I sincerely appreciate the fact that you, you care enough that you're here. You're not just complaining about us on social media. No. You're actually yeah. engaging. That's nice. yep. And I read your Yelp reviews. Everybody loves you. You have got very popular and um, profound the loyal I pride myself in the stores that I run. Mm -hmm. Yes, I you're not in it for the money or in it to help. Um, just this is really, really us down. This is um, something we all feel very, very passionately about. Um, were it not for e-cigarettes, I would probably have had an asthma attack because I have very severe asthma and I would have died. Um, one of the main components that makes e-cigarettes uh, something for me is um, my mom is now 56 years old. Uh, she has been smoking since she was 14. Uh, she used to go with a dollar, buy her mom a pack of cigarettes, and cigarettes are 50 cents a piece, so she'd go and smoke them in the woods. And uh, she's been smoking for, uh, so 14 to 56, so 44 years, uh, or 42 years, excuse me. Um, my mom was the first one to pick up vaping, and she was like, no, 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 try this, try this, and I made fun of her, and I was like, that's just a joke, it's a fad, it's never gonna kick off or whatever. Um, I picked up vaping and then I never looked back. And what hurts me is my mom tried hypnotism, she tried gums, she tried patches, she tried absolutely everything and absolutely nothing worked. And then she found one tobacco flavor. The only reason she found it is because she could taste a liquid, she found one tobacco flavor that helped her quit and she stopped for a year. She picked it back up again because my Nana moved back up, she smoked cigarettes, you know, peer pressure. She's back on it again from that one flavor all over again. And she came into another one of our establishments, tried another flavor she liked, and now she's even more passionate about it. So vaping for all of us isn't just something that we're trying to make money on and get people addicted to. We're not about that. We don't deal with big tobacco. We don't like those retailers. We don't do anything big tobacco. We do nothing combustible. We are all about harm mitigation and a healthy er cessation method for adult smokers. That. And I also would like to add that you know, whereas we might not all see eye to eye here and things have been getting very tense, I would like to say that things have been getting very tense because this is something that we feel so passionately about. And this is something that we all care about. This isn't us just coming at you guys, like exactly like Chris said, you know, just to, to complain to complain or throwing out baseless accusations, you know. This is something that we care about. This impacts our business. This impacts American businesses. This impacts our customers' lives. This impacts absolutely everything. And we feel so passionate about it because it, it really is everything for us. This isn't just a job. For me, this is getting people off of cigarettes. And what is even worse personally for me is the FDA bars us from telling you that you know that vaping is healthier for you than smoking because that is a scientific fact. In the United Kingdom, they openly tell you vaping is 95% safer than smoking. And that has been, that was since vaping came out in around 07. Since 2011, they have been doing continuous testing for the last eight, nine years just on vaping. And they've come to that conclusion. So much so to where the entire United Kingdom actually tells you Go and pick up a vape. It is recognized like nicoderm. Companies pay for it out of pocket to get their, their employees to stop smoking, you know? Sure. It's not just something. And we understand that, you know, with regulations and whatever, you guys' hands are tied, and we are definitely going to be coming back at you guys with some stuff, 100%. Okay. But just understand that, you know, we're not angry at you guys just for doing your jobs. We're angry because we've already been regulated by the Food and Drug Administration and the federal government. And I can't tell my customers that vaping is healthier for you because if I do, I get fined $2,000 and indicted. You you know, like it's it's a huge deal and it's it's very unfortunate. And for further regulation to come in and hinder our ability to get more people off of cigarettes, it is an incredibly huge and big hit for us and it hurts us a lot. Thank you for your time. Your mother would be very proud. 
Do you guys have anything else to say? Anything else to add? No. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions for our esteemed guests? No, no just that I'm willing to look at it again once I see the I'm willing to look updated, at it again. Whatever she that. can find. Very willing to look at it again. I'd like to hear from DJ. I thought that Marty would have um, reached out to him. We could probably bring DJ um, Wilson in, but he's the head of the tobacco, state's tobacco yeah. and vaping, and he's yeah, that we can yeah, I, I was surprised that yeah that that, that call coming. wasn't um yeah because um, Marty would have to call him <laughs> yeah so um that would be on him so yeah um alrighty well if there's nothing else on that subject I would like to move from that agenda item so for now we have to keep the regulations as is until I'll we be get in touch. Yep. yes be in touch and then you guys can get back on the agenda come in. The health agent should be here that by then. If we know when you're coming, we can get DJ Wilson to come too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and do you, you guys he know what our meeting schedule is? Every mm -hmm. other Monday. Every yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks from today. Okay. We set our agenda the Thursday before, so you know yeah. if you you get in touch with us, we'll put you on. And I definitely will. I know Wayne wants to be a part of it, but again, he's in. Um, Scotland, of course. So. Of course. <laughs> so we all have to have a lot of in. Yeah, he's, I wouldn't leave Scotland. He's in <laughs> Scotland <laughs> stressing <laughs> right now, I'll tell you that much. But, um, but thank you for hearing us. I know, us. remind him. Thanks for coming in. Just said. Well, I mean, that Maybe was to get... Maybe he didn't read that. No, I, I'm sure. What, what was it to get? Factor two. Well, I mean, that was like to get our tobacco license, right. between just the flavor and the tobacco. So right, that's, right. I mean, that's something we can figure out. Yeah, yeah. That, that was signed off on in order to get the tobacco license, right? But so you right. have to comply with what you're signing off on. In order yeah. to get your Check tobacco off. license. <laughs> what do you mean? When you redid your license in January, you had to... No, what was that? 11-18. Do you want my copy? 11-12-18. Yeah, so, so November 12th. How that, why, why yes, that was for tobacco ended? license. That was sent along with it. Mm -hmm. Probably a license renewal, renewal, yeah, which right. happens at the end of the year. Yes. All licenses are good till December 31st. So and that then was they in renewal order to renew our service, license to continue tobacco, business, yes. All of those. Well, and it was to inform them about the changes that we made yeah. in Yeah, you can take that with you. I'm that happy. the regulation, I can tons of paper. when we updated, <laughs> it was July 1st, mm -hmm. 2017, and that is why he was sent this. I have a copy, thank you. Yeah. It wasn't really for their licensing, it was Yeah, I think it was for the we, town. Because it was Because we made town. changes yeah. that directly impacted your so, business, that's why. The way I'm reading this, if I sell nicotine delivery devices, E6, I must display signs that state that the sale of nicotine delivery device to minors is prohibited and the use of e-cigarettes in indoor establishments is prohibited by law. What this is saying, as far as I'm reading it, is I must display signs that say we can't sell to minors and I also must display signs that say you can't vape in other reach at other establishments like obviously that wouldn't also include a vape shop yeah no it does it, it yes, checked, yeah. he checked it off yeah. saying so. he's applying this is his he is not talking about the next door neighbor he's talking about his own establishment yeah i so. feel like if those were this would be two separate bullet points those are two completely unrelated items that are put on the same this but he already point, signed it i understand but <laughs> i think you're misinterpreting what it means side. This number 21 bullet point is about signage, not about vaping inside. Of things yell it out there. It says, if I sell nicotine delivery devices, I must display signs stating, this number 21 is about signage, not about vaping yeah, inside. Is another one. It is about signage, but the sign has to say that the use of e-cigs or anything at an indoor establishment is prohibited. So it but, is about the sign, so but what, also what I'm there's saying a, that is if you're in a in a bar, then it, obviously it needs to be say you it, said, yeah, no smoking regard, regard, exactly. Yeah. In the same regard that you can't walk into a vape shop and drink a beer, but you can have. But we don't have to have signs that say no drinking in public. In but we do have signs store. in this building too, I think, that say no smoking inside. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. we, because it's a so public place. But this is a public. This is different than. Yeah, I've, I've gone with That's the health agent to, to do things, and I know the state gives us signs to give to you all for yes. this. And yeah. Marty actually commented on the signs that we personally made for our store, and he was commenting on us on how well they were done. That's good. I mean, we and I'm not asking for a compliment, but it's we have proper signage. We, I mean, for yeah. sure. But that that's how we run it. It's about signage, not about whether or not you can't okay. be. 
Very, very quickly. Might I add okay. something? <laughs> okay, so uh, when are you guys banning alcohol tasting? That's, that's also, I'd like to right, ban alcohol that's not on the agenda. And <laughs> the, it's not, and that's state regulation. We'll 50 minutes on yeah, this. Yeah, we really have. Um, I'm so sorry, but um, this is where we're going to have to leave it for now. Because um, we're just going over the same old um, information. Um, I know it's not what you wanted to hear, um, but. I think that you're not willing to accept that you might be misinterpreting this. I think we are because no. we said we'd look at it another time and we said your your esteemed colleague would send us information. Well, this is, well, it's in here now. Yeah, this actually, to, to address that specifically, yes. so the language is saying um, at indoor establishments is prohibited by local law. So the workplace regs that are in place for Abington would be those local laws, which also would cover Maybe your shop. Maybe you should shop. be a little more specific in that verbiage. Yeah. 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 You're right, this, yeah. this is, is not very clear, big. but, but that's that local law that they're the referring to is our workplace law, which also covers your establishment. And that's a local law, not so which is all, which No, is, it's also a state just law. Following our local laws, as I said earlier, we've only so, adopted state guidelines. And I ask this yeah. purely because I don't know and I'd like to. Why is it that if you work at a smoke shop, you can smoke cigarettes? inside a smoke shop. You can't. You can't. Because you most certainly not can't. Not in Abbey, no. no. You can't. Not in the it's state. Really not, not in the state, Not in the state, no. In the state, you can't smoke in any public building And if they do, they're doing places. it illegally. Like, even, even at Arnold Park, where I, I walk my dog, I'm legally not supposed to smoke in that park. It's a public park. I'm not supposed to be smoking there. And there are signs that say no smoking in the park. Yeah, I'm speaking off the cuff here, but I, I think like it, it's cigar clubs and stuff that's a private establishment, which yes. is why they can do it there. Okay. Uh, I know like the Knights of Columbus here in Abington, um, they had a bar which they allowed smoking at because it it's, it's a private establishment. Yep. Yeah. Now, now I believe now they're not allowed they lost to. It. Even no. under right. the, no, they lost they it. Right, they lost it. And I don't want to say that this is the way it is because it was a long time ago that I looked into this, but at the time it was if, if X percent of 60%. revenue came from a particular item that you sold, the product that you sold, you were allowed to partake in that product in your establishment. And that's why smoke shops were able to allow smoking inside. Yeah, that might, I, I'm not, I'd have to read it, but that might be yeah. something that changed, you know, with the, mm -hmm. with the updates. And Good point. Um, quite quickly, uh, I do know that you guys didn't want to get into what I had just remarked on, but yep. um, my point was... Well, it's not our area. Right, I get and it. It's not um, on the agenda, and we've given you... And we have given you a lot of time, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, you want to say one quick thing? No, it's okay. Forget it. Say it. Thank you very much for the opportunity <laughs> to speak here today. Um, I very much so appreciate being somewhat heard. Um, you guys have been very professional, although we haven't you seen You are time. definitely heard. Thank, Thank you, you all so for much. the opportunity. Thank you definitely heard. Thank you guys very much for coming in. We do appreciate all of your voices. And I look forward to more education. Thank Thank you. You. Thank Thank you. And if more Haley calls me, because I'm waiting. I left the message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's quite all right. Thank you. all right. Right in there. All right. So let's move it on to the next item on the agenda if anybody doesn't mind Is it plastic bin plastic bag oh. plastic bag um, well i <laughs> think anybody we have can probably note? can i freely yes. say what's going on um, jack buckley's actually written us up as a warrant for the town meeting oh good because Let's do that. most towns have done it that way yeah they usually have a few vocal people in the beginning um, i did want to remind our board but we don't have a full board that we are supposed to be a board of health we're not supposed to really, yes, we can assist businesses in switching over and stuff once this does go, yeah. but we should not be concerned about what it's going to cost them. We're a board of health. Got it. Not We're, a concern. You know, so it is going to, there's a warrant. It hasn't gotten the signatures yet. Hopefully it's going to go to our town meeting in May, but we could probably keep it on for further discussion because it will eventually come to us. To and, adopt and, the race. Yeah. There's a state, I forget which state, just recently last week's talking about banning oh, it statewide. So it is happening and it, no, it's, not, a, not it's a good discussion. Not to be argumentative, Go but if the, so let's say it goes to town warrant and the town decides they don't want to ban bags, we still have the power oh, to ban bags. Yes, we, yes. Do. No, we yes. do. So it's kind of a moot point. Right. Well, I, most towns, they did, they... At least have a public conversation. They did it at town meeting and even though they had some vocal groups, what they found when it went to town meeting, it was unanimous. Mm -hmm. So, 
You always have the open meeting after you've got the regs so that people can voice their opinion. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. This would still take time. It, it definitely would. Oh, yeah. I mean, we still haven't gotten the marijuana regs back. They're at town right. council, and then we'll right. get them but back. Right, but we haven't gotten them back yeah. to yeah. sign them in yet. So look how long that's taken between us approving them yeah, and, we and actually getting them back have from town council. somebody applying for... Um, it's a plastic can that's on so, the agenda. Okay. So it'll be on town meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Only because that's not like I don't think that's really how it's going. So compost site. Compost site. I guess we need compost site volunteers. Um, we need three more compost site volunteers. If we do not have enough compost site volunteers, then the compost site will not be able to open. Um, so Were there people that weren't coming back? Yes, we have three people that aren't coming back. Yeah, and um, not really. I, I don't think that. Didn't want to call you. Yeah, well, I, I think that we might get one of them back. There's a health um, a concern for one. Um, but for those who want to volunteer, I just would like to make an announcement that we are accepting Crop site volunteers. Um, the finalization and the application goes through the Senior Center, and um, there is a benefit for those that can volunteer We're over 62. There's a tax benefit, a property tax benefit. Um, so although you're volunteering and there's no monetary exchange, uh, you knock a few bucks off those very high property taxes. Um, so there is a benefit. I have been talking to a couple of people, and um, I do know that we have gotten a couple of new volunteers. Um, but right. um, with this, uh, with anybody, so you got to be over 62 to get the tax benefit. So and people that are over 62 quite often, Florida in the winter and come up here for the summer. So I think that's what we're running into um, with that. And does anybody, so um, does anybody have anything else to add to the compost site volunteers? I did tell uh, Marty that if uh, they needed a filler, um, oh, good. I'd be on call. That'd be great. I um, cannot um, in the spring, forget it. It's just too busy for me. Should we let people know if they're going to volunteer, they will be Corey and Zoe? I think that they, they should know that if they've been watching. But yes, if okay. you um, are a volunteer, that you will have to be queried and you will have to be sorried. And that is done. It's done by the Abington Police, but it's done through the Council on Aging office. Um, just to clear up any of those confusions. But thank you, Linda. That was no, a great you. thing to um, make mention of. I because, just yeah. want them to be aware. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, did you have something, Chris? Mm -hmm. No, I talked to Marty. Um, so we have a venturing crew, which is, uh, and we've got some youth that are like 18 to 21 um, who may be putting in some hours as volunteers, and they literally just got quarried. But that would be fabulous. They have to go through the, the town as well anyway. But, yeah, fabulous. Um, so it's yes, additional. Fabulous. Um, I see you guys passing the minutes back up to me. Um, so does that mean, does anybody want to? Motion to accept the minutes. So, so we have Terry March has 4th. motions to accept the minutes. Do we have a second? A second. So Chris has second. All those in favor of motion the minutes, are they in here? <laughs> there they are. Yes. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say opposed. I hear nobody opposing, so we have a four agree. Four zero, yes. Alex is not here. Um, so that's all we need. I am signing the minutes. Oh, does anybody have anything else they would like to add? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Excellent. Chris has made a motion to adjourn, and Linda has seconded that motion. I don't know if these papers should go back in here, but I'm just going to send them back Those in here. Those are the reports, so there'll be a copy with the minutes, I think. Oh, okay. And, and oh, did, is that what that was? And I did ask. I did tell Are we a copy of that. No. Oh, we're not. Sorry. Um, all of those in favor say aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Yeah. We are now adjourned. Thank yeah. you. Sorry.